it's winter and this is a an interesting time for photography because it's either amazing with some really nice winter light, you know, snow, all of that kind of stuff, really, really nice kind of photography subjects and, and, and just lovely times, or it's horrible, it's super rainy, which is what it's like right now, super gray, and not an interesting gray, like a flat, boring gray. Not always the best, but we can make our own snow. And that's what we're gonna do, because it's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. And this week, we're diving into Photoshop. We're gonna add our own snow to kind of an environmental portrait. But this works on all kinds of different photos. It's actually surprisingly easy and straightforward. There's a few steps, but we're gonna go through all of it. Don't you worry about that. And it'll work on, on like I say, all kinds of photos. So you can do a few portraits. Environmental portraits work great. You know, a bit of landscape. It's perfect for making maybe a Christmas card, a Christmas image that you wanna to send to people. It's great if, like me, you love the snow, you desperately wanna photograph it, but it just rains all the time. So this is a great way to kind of make up for that. It's a fun exercise to do as well, and it gets us in the Christmas spirit, if nothing else. So let's dive in. I've got this photo, which we're gonna use. Now, first things first, before we do anything else, as always, let's go ahead and duplicate the layer. We can do that. We can select the layer and press Control J, or of course, we can right click and go on Duplicate Layer. So with the duplicated layer, it just saves that original layer, makes it a little bit easier to, to go back if we need to. Now, before we go any further, we're gonna need to add the kind of base snow across the ground, the trees, the leaves, everything. It needs to be kind of spread around, but with enough detail poking through the snow of the, you know, the sticks on the ground, the, the leaves, the trees, stuff like that, to make it believable. So here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna have our, our new layer selected. We're gonna come up here to select and we're gonna click on color range. Now this is gonna allow us to select, make a selection based on the color. And for this photo, we're gonna use orange because it's the main color in the image, but you're gonna wanna pick whatever the main color in your image is. So if it's a summary photo, you wanna use green, I would imagine. You know, if it's, if it's a forest, probably green, but because this is autumn, there's a lot of orange in the photo. So we're gonna go ahead and pick one of the oranges in this scene. Now you can do this by pressing on the eyedropper tool here. It's probably already selected. And then selecting any of these orange colors. So let's just, let's just pick any of the ones on the ground. Let's pick this here. Now you can see there's an image here with black and white. The white is what is going to be selected when you press okay and the black is not. So obviously that's not enough. Now we're gonna to wanna to start playing with this fuzziness kind of meter, this fuzziness slider, which is gonna allow us to expand that selection based on the color. And you can see as we do that, the image is gonna change. So let's bring that up. And as you see, you know, it's quite nice actually working with the black and the white because you can essentially view it a little bit like snow. Now for this image, it's probably gonna work best somewhere between 140 and 150, but it is gonna depend a little bit on your image. And once you're happy with how this looks, again, the white will be the selection, you can go ahead and press OK. And it's gonna make that selection for you in the photo. Now we can come down here with the selection there and create a new solid color layer and let's do it in white. Now you could do off-white. I would just do white. I think it's. I think it looks better. I think it, it's easier to kind of work with, but you could do kind of off-white if you want to as well. But for now, we're gonna, do, we're gonna do white. And you can see immediately, this has kind of covered our image with snow. So we've got snow on the ground, but with still enough detail of the sticks and the leaves poking through on the leaves, on the trees, it looks really good. There's a couple of things we need to tidy up and it's gonna be pretty easy to do so, but we're off to a good start. Now, before we go any further, let's just tidy up immediately one of the kind of things in this photo. So first thing we can do is just double click on this layer, the color fill layer, anywhere on this blank gray part, and that's gonna bring up the layer style. And we can use the blend if mode to just refine how this looks a little bit. And this is personal preference a little bit. I actually think it looks really good right now, but let's just bring this up a little bit. So that's going to then not apply it to maybe some of the darkest areas. We can press Alt and click on this area here to, to separate it. And we're now gonna be able to make a nice transition where the actual white is applied to the darkest areas. You know, if we were to bring this up, it would just bring it out of the darkest areas and eventually it would be gone completely. 
That's obviously not what we want to do, but we want to make a nice transition. So let's press and hold Alt and click on there, and then just bring this up a little bit. It's going to fix some of the issues on our model. I think that looks pretty good. I think that looks okay. Again, it's personal preference, but I think that looks pretty good. There's some other bits we just need to tidy up. So we can press OK on that. And then you can see our model skin up here on the hands looks a bit crazy. So we need to fix that. We can do that pretty easy. We just need to select the layer mask on this layer. And then we can make some slight adjustments. So let's select that there. If you want to learn entirely about layer masks, we've got a whole video about it. I'll pop that in the description in case you want to check that out. But with the layer mask selected, we can use our brush tool with black selected to actually just kind of take off what we've done here on the skin tone so we can protect that. Now I've got a pretty soft brush. You can hold Alt, right click and drag up and down to affect the hardness and left and right to affect the size of the brush. Let's use uh, let's use a flow about, about 59% and a pretty soft brush I'd say and just paint black onto our subject's hands here. If you make a mistake, you can press Control Z to go back. But otherwise, let's just paint back in this kind of skin tone. If you want a slightly easier way of doing this, we can come up here to the Quick Selection tool and then click Select Subject. Photoshop's gonna make uh, an estimate on what it thinks the subject is. We can just refine that a little bit. So we can add to the selection by just left clicking and dragging. And then we can, we can remove from the selection by holding Alt and then left clicking. So let's do that just to select our subject here a little bit. It's just gonna make things a little bit easier for us. So with our selection now kind of sorted, we can click on the layer mask again with our brush tool with black selected, we can just paint over these hands without worrying so much about, uh, about you know, causing issues outside of the, the selection. I'm just gonna paint on the hands and on the other parts of the skin that are exposed like the ankle just to, uh, just to stick with that for now, and then you can press Control D to to remove your selection. Now I think this already looks really quite good. I think we've got a nice bit of snow on here. I think we've got a little bit of snow on our subject. We could probably add a little bit more if we want to as well. But there's a few things we can do to kind of sell this a little bit more. So first of all, let's select a new layer. Let's come up to the gradient tool over here. And I really feel like this helps with the kind of snow feel and, and the brightness, because you get that kind of, when, when you actually photograph snow, it's very bright. So you need to kind of add that kind of brightness coming off the snow. So what we're gonna do is use this, use this gradient. We need to make sure we've got white selected and we wanna have it uh, going from white, full opacity to white, but no opacity. So it's gonna, it's gonna fade. And we can just draw this in from the bottom, something like that, and just change the blending mode to something like soft light. Let's draw one in from the right as well. And it just kind of brightens the parts of the image where there's a bit of snow. Let's bring something in from the left as well. And I think, I think that really helps to bring that kind of bright glow of the snow out, which is generally what I've experienced when I've photographed snow before. Next, we probably want to play around a little bit with the saturation. You know, our subject is looking very kind of contrasty and saturated compared with the kind of surroundings. So let's go ahead and select a new hue saturation layer. And we're going to want to just, let's bring down the overall saturation a little bit. Let's select the reds, bring down that saturation a little bit. I think that, you know, that looks okay. Let's bring down the blues probably a little bit as well. And we're gonna to wanna to deal with this contrast a little bit as well. So we can go ahead and add a new layer down here, a new brightness and contrast layer. Now let's bring the contrast down quite a lot, maybe the brightness up. And we can go ahead and just apply this to our model if we want to, although I think it works quite well as it is. Now we might wanna add a little bit of extra snow just onto our model to make her kind of blend better with the surroundings. We can come back down here to our layer zero copy. We're gonna select that, come up to select, color range again. And this time we're gonna select, let's select the blue in her jeans, something like, something like this. Let's add a little bit of that. And then let's maybe add just a little bit of the red here. Let's bring the fuzziness down to something like, something like 12. Let's press OK. Now this is going to select other parts of the scene, as you can see. 
which is not what we want, but that's okay. We can sort that out in a moment. So let's click, let's add the solid color. Let's go for white. Let's press okay. Let's double click on the layer again and bring this blend if level up a little bit. Hold alt and left click and just create a bit more of a, of a transition here. This has added some snow to her. Let's press okay. We wanna remove this from the rest of the scene. We just want it on her. So let's come up to the brush tool. Let's select the layer mask here. We've got black selected. Let's bring our flow up to about 100%. Let's make a nice big brush, which you can do holding Alt, right click and drag right or left. And let's just paint this out of the image, the surrounding image around her. Now you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have gotten pretty much every area, even like within her arms in this case, and make sure again that you get those skin tones so that we're kind of protecting that a little bit. So there's, it's worth kind of just going over what you're gonna go for. Also, if there's any kind of edges to, in this case, the jeans, I'm just painting that out so that it doesn't look as kind of crazy obvious that we've kind of done this. But otherwise, this gives really good results. We end up with kind of snow on our subjects, on our shoes, on her, her jeans, on her top a little bit, as if she's kind of, you know, playing around in the snow. Now, this is personal preference, how much you wanna be on there. We can, of course, just turn this back off because it's on its own layer now. So if we wanna have her without the snow, that's absolutely fine, but for now, Let's keep the snow on here. I think this looks pretty good, but of course, we might wanna go one step further and add some actual snow snowing during the actual photo. Now, there's a few ways that we can do this. There's loads of places online that you can go and get a nice PNG of some, of some snow, some fake snow, and just apply it to your image, change the blending mode to screen. But if you don't wanna do that, and that's not what we're gonna do, we're gonna make our own snow. I'm gonna show you how we can do that. And I think it looks pretty good, to be honest. So let's let's go ahead and create a new layer. And we're gonna come up here to the brush tool. Let's make sure we've got white selected. And then we're gonna click on this little symbol here next to kind of some of the brush settings to bring up the full kind of brush settings that we've got here. And there's a few things we're gonna do. First thing, we're gonna turn on scattering. Now we're gonna bring the count well, actually, it's already at one. So we're gonna, we're gonna leave that at one. And we're gonna leave the count jitter probably a little bit a little bit high. So it's a little bit more random. Now this is gonna allow us to kind of paint in snow a little bit more randomly and also a lot easier than painting in each individual snowflake. We're gonna come to shape dynamics. We're gonna turn that on. Let's click on there. This is gonna allow us to randomize a little bit the size of the snowflake. So we've got the size jitter here. I wanna have it about 50%. I think that's gonna work pretty well. We're gonna come down to smoothing. Let's turn that on. And then let's come up to brush tip shape. And this is really where we're gonna we're gonna change this up. Let's bring the spacing, it's at 1% right now. Let's bring it up to something like 118%. That's gonna allow us to, to paint these in without having to paint in each individual one. It's gonna kind of randomize a little bit how they're applied and how they're put in there, but we can just paint them onto the image. We can also click on transfer just to add a little bit of a kind of flow jitter so that they're not all at 100% flow. So you get a little bit of opacity difference between the uh, between the different snowflakes, you know, depending on, I guess, how close they were to the camera when they were, when they were shot. So with this all done, we wanna keep our brush reasonably small actually. And let's start just painting and dragging across the image. And we can do that exactly like this. And there we go, you can, you can take more time than I just did, but we've now got all these snowflakes actually on the image. But that's of course not where we're gonna leave it. They don't look super realistic anyway. So let's go ahead, right click, and let's, let's make this a smart object. So we wanna to convert to smart object. And that allows us to apply some filters and then also go back and change them if we want to, so we're not set with what we've got. Let's click on filter up at the top here. Let's go to blur and let's go to motion blur. Now we're gonna wanna set the angle. In this case, I'm gonna go from sort of top left down to, down to bottom right. And then we can actually dial in how much motion blur there's gonna be. So let's bring it to about, let's bring it to about 31. That looks pretty good. Then you've still got a little bit of shape to it, but as you can see, they now look significantly more 
kind of blurry. Now, if you think that these are too big, we could have gone in again and done this with kind of smaller flakes or indeed with, with even less flakes. These may be too many. That would be really easy to do. You would just adjust the settings that we went through, but it adds kind of an extra layer to your photo. But if you look now, we really have transformed this into a really snowy kind of Christmassy feeling photo. If we press and hold alt and then click on the kind of eyeball here next to the original layer, we can isolate that layer. That's how we started. And then do that again and that's where we've ended up. So before and after. It's not super difficult. It gives you really, you know, serious results. You know, even if you don't like it, it's very different. It's extremely different. And this makes for a great way for doing like a Christmas card you wanna send out, an image you wanna send around to people, or just or just a nice image that you wanna use for something, you know, across social media or, or whatever, whatever you want really. You know, you could even, if you spent enough time with it and made it really nice, you could even probably get some sort of Christmassy print done as well. So that is, there's lots of options for how you wanna do this. It works on loads of different photos. And I think it's a fun edit to try on a few different photos. Now, if you have any questions about anything you've seen in the video, of course, pop it down in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts as well. I'd love to start knowing how you feel about, you know, how far we're going. I mean, this is, this is editing to kind of the extreme, you know, to a degree. This is really pushing the edit. This is nothing like the original photo. So this, is, this isn't just, you know, contrast, highlights, shadows, playing around with, with levels and stuff like that. This is really making a huge difference. So I'd love to know how you feel, where you think the line is with photography. You know, this is probably more graphic design or art, I guess, than photography specifically, but I'd love to know what you think about editing and where you think the line should be drawn before, you know, where would you not go so far? Is this too far? I'd love to know. Let me know down in the comments. I will, of course, see you in the... Oh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Ooh, almost forgot to say it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That always helps us out. Also, there's new tutorials all the time, so it's just a good time. I will see you in the next video, and as always, thanks for watching.